Let me hear you make some noise! Let me hear you make some noise! Be louder! Good afternoon, my name is Carlos Benitez with Brighton Park Neighborhood Council. And my name is Fasika Alam with the United African Organization. Welcome! If you're ready for citizenship for all, make some noise! Si están listo para ciudadanía para todos, haga ruido! If you're ready to end deportations, let me hear you! Si están listos para poner un fin a las deportaciones, hagan ruido! We cannot wait. So we're going to do a chant right now. So when I say we, when I say we can't, you say wait. We can't. We can't. We can't. We can't. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. Our people united will never be divided. Our people united will never be divided. Our people united will never be divided. Thank you. Thank you all for being here today. Before we get started, we'd like to acknowledge that we're on the ancestral and unceded land of the Council of Three Fires, the o Ojibwe, the Potawatomi, and the Odwa. In addition, this land was also home to various tribes, including the Kikapu, Peoria, Miami, Ho-Chunk, and the Kaskasia, Kaskaskia people. We honor the people past and present of these nations and extend our gratitude to the land itself. Antes de comenzar, nos gustaría reconocer que estamos en la tierra ancestral y no cerrada del Consejo de los Tres Fuegos, los Ojibwe, Patawatami y los Odwa. Entre ellos, esta tierra también fue el hogar de varias tribus, incluyendo los Kikapu, Peoria, Miami, Ho-Chunk, y el pueblo de Kaskaskia. Honramos las personas pasadas y presentes de estas naciones y extendemos nuestra gratitud a la tierra misma. We've got a lot of people here from a lot of organizations. We're going to do some, some shout outs, but this, is, this list is not short. So we're gonna try to get through it as quickly as possible. So the names will pop up behind me, but with us we have um, the participating ISA members, AAAJ Chicago, AAFS, Access Living, AFIRE, BNIHD, BPNC, CARE Chicago, Casa Michoacan, Catholic Charities, CBCAC, CRLN, CTU, CWC, CU, Anlase, Episcopal Diocese of Chicago, Hana Center, IAC, JCUA, LOS, LSNA, Mano a Mano, MLEA, NIJFON, SSIP, UAO, VAI, and World Relief. If I missed anybody, we might have missed you. If we missed you, shout out your organizations now. Thank you. We'd also like to recognize the staff from the Congress's Marcia's office that are here with us today. Give them a round of applause. Make some noise. Are you ready to fight for citizenship for all? Están listos para ciudadanía para todos. Haga ruido. Are you ready to end deportations everywhere and end ICE detention in Illinois? Let me hear you. Están listos para poner un fin a las deportaciones? Están listos para eliminar la detención de inmigrantes en Illinois? Make some noise. Make some noise. At this point, we'd like to welcome ICER's board vice president, the co-founder and director of organizing of the, of the Southwest Suburban Immigrant Project, Elizabeth Cervantes. I always have to.
to do that because I'm so short. Hola! Good afternoon. How are you guys? ¿Cómo están? My name is Elizabeth Cervantes, and I am proudly representing the ICER Board of Directors. I'm a member of our Action Council and also a member of my SSIP familia who took a bus to be out here today. Where are you all at? I'm very proud to be representing here today all of you because ICER is a coalition that believes in and fights for what often feels far away for many but always feels right to us. I want you all to take a moment right now to look around and see the person next to you, in front of you, and look at how large the ICER family and allies community is. Do you see that? Do you feel that extended familia warm? I know I do. Thank you so much for being here. So today I'm here because like many of you, I'm quite tired. The first time that I was in an ICER gathering, just like this one, I was a young 20-year-old undocumented student, now protected under DACA, and we were fighting and demanding citizenship. We haven't changed our fight since then, but we have changed in how much more we believe in it. But I must admit that I am tired of waiting for the right moment, for the right opportunity to have the same basic rights as everyone else. How much longer must we wait? ¿Cuánto tiempo más tenemos que esperar? The last time there was a pathway to citizenship in this country was 35 years ago. 35 years. La última vez que tuvimos un camino a la ciudadanía en este país fue hace 35 años. We're also here today because for the first time in 35 years, we have a real chance to get this done. Let me paint you a quick picture. Last year, immigrant voters, along with 81 million others, voted Donald Trump, Stephen Miller, and their white supremacist anti-immigrant agenda out of Washington. <laughs> President Biden ran on a platform promising to be different and was inaugurated on that promise. Yet here we are today, six months into the new leadership with almost 600,000 people deported and all immigration legislation stuck in the Senate with the Republican filibuster. Estamos aquí seis meses después de una nueva administración con casi 600 mil personas deportadas y todas propuestas de ley de inmigración atoradas en el Senado gracias a los republicanos y su bloqueo. An hour ago or so, 200 community leaders across the state met here to strategize and collect on what we were promised. Through the federal budget process taking place right now, creating a new pathway for citizenship for millions of undocumented people for the first time in three decades is actually within reach. Por primera vez en este momento tenemos una oportunidad para pasar legalización para millones de personas indocumentadas en las últimas tres semanas, tres décadas y podemos lograrlo. A pathway to citizenship can be included in the budget. It has been done before and it can happen again. The votes are within reach to get it done. But we need our members of Congress to fight for it. Pero necesitamos a nuestros miembros del Congreso que luchen por esto. The votes are within the reach to get it done. And we know they won't do it unless we push them. Like the social movements of the past, we know that we are the ones that are needed to step up meet the moment and build power to bring relief and ultimately freedom to our communities. Sabemos que depende de nosotros para traer libertad a nuestras comunidades. So even though I'm tired, I am also filled with hope. Because listen, locally, we are on the cusp of ending immigration detention in Illinois. Through the Illinois Way Forward Act, if we can do it in Illinois, it can be done federally. A pathway to citizenship is only part of the solution because people who have documentation already are still threatened by the deportation machine that rips families apart 
And today, let's remember our family members and friends in ICE detention who have either committed no criminal offense or have already served their time. This is because the current immigration system is flawed, biased, and fueled by the same white supremacist systems that drive our flawed and ineffective criminal law system. And we recognize that today. Detention is senseless and inhumane, and we are here to demand an end to it. Estamos aquí para pedir un paro ya a las deportaciones y detenciones. And regardless of what we hear, we know it is possible. Citizenship and an end to detention and deportations is a possibility, and we are the key. Before we hear how to do that, I need you to think about what brought you here today. Maybe you're directly impacted by a racist immigration system like I am. Maybe a loved one is. Maybe it's broader, a broader sense of justice for you. Whatever your motivation is, I need you to channel all of that energy and commit to being all in for the next few months and to organize and mobilize to bring more people to show up next month and the following. Necesitamos que por el motivo que tú hayas presentado el día de hoy aquí, que puedas continuar en los próximos meses trayendo a más personas a este movimiento. This window won't be open indefinitely and we need an outpouring in the streets like unlike any other. So today, we are here with a thousand people. If each of you bring 10 more people here to the next rally, that will be 10,000 people, and we can grow from there. El día de hoy estamos reunidas aquí mil personas más o menos. Si para la próxima demostración cada persona trae a 10 más, son 10 mil personas, y así podemos continuar creciendo. No one is going to do this with us, for us. So are you with me? Están conmigo? Are you ready to fight? Are you ready to win? Yeah. On behalf of ICER and its members, I thank you for taking the time to be here. Gracias por estar aquí. And now I'd like to introduce Omar and Silvia to share our demands. Adelante, Omar y Silvia. Welcome everyone, uh, my name is Omar and I'm an organizer with the Arab American Family Services and we are here today to ask four things of our members of Congress. First, we want a pathway to citizenship for all included in the budget. The budget can be passed with 51 votes in the Senate without a Republican filibuster. Immigration must be a priority for democratic leadership, and they must get the job done now. <laughs> Include a pathway to citizenship in the upcoming budget. Second, ICE and TPP get a huge amount of our tax dollars. And it goes up every single year. In the fiscal year of 2021, 20, ICE and TPP received $25.4 billion. That's a billion with a B. The time to cut ICE and TPP's budget, reduce ICE arbitrary detentions and deportations practices, and invest those funds in citizenship support and other community investments in law is long overdue. Third, we do not need to wait for Congress to act. Biden can act right now instead of deporting close to 600,000 people under his, under his watch so far. While we work to eliminate ICE altogether as a long-term goal, we can reduce its footprints right now. We need Biden and the DHS Secretary Alejandro Myrokas to make the definition of who is a priority for deportation as narrow as possible through a memo that will come out soon known as the persecutional discretion. They, yeah, they do not need to wait for Congress to act. Biden must keep his promises. And lastly, we need the White House to 
should do everything it can through executive action to provide relief and eliminate the fear of deportation that so many have been living under over the past eight years, under Obama and under Trump. Yeah! So we're asking all of our members of Congress to fire all the cylinders and make immigration a priority now. Because we can't wait! We can't wait! And I'll introduce Sylvia. Buenas tardes, muy buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Silvia. Soy del programa del CTU y desde hace seis años. Estamos aquí para decir cuatro cosas a los miembros de, del Congreso Federal. Primero, queremos que el Congreso incluya un camino a la ciudadanía para todos en la presupuesta de gastos. La presupuesta de gastos puede pasar con 51 votos en el Senado sin ninguna instrucción de los republicanos. La inmigración debe de ser una prioridad y un liderazgo para los demócratas y debe de hacerse un trabajo. Ahora es tiempo de que exista un camino a la ciudadanía y a la propuesta de gastos. Segundo, la agencia de ICE en CBP reciben una cantidad exagerada de nuestros impuestos y esta cantidad incrementa cada año. En el año 2021, que fue este, ICE y CBI recibió 25.4 billones de impuestos, que es de nuestro dinero que trabajamos. En tiempo, para reducir la cantidad de estos fondos que recibe ICE y CBP, es tiempo de acabar con las detenciones y deportaciones. Es tiempo de invertir esos fondos en nuestras comunidades. Es tiempo de hacer esto que, que ya está demasiado tarde y se está trazando. No nos están haciendo caso, tienen que hacernos caso. Tercero, no necesitamos esperar para que el Congreso se ponga las pilas. El presidente Biden puede actuar en este momento en vez de seguir reportando más de 600 mil personas por año. Mientras trabajamos para eliminar ICE completamente, podemos de reducir esos efectos ahora. Necesitamos que Biden y el líder de DHS, Alejandro Mallorca, reduzca las los parodómetros de quienes ellos consideran una prioridad de las deportaciones. Esto lo pueden hacer por medio de un memo de, de discreción fiscal. Eso no necesita esperar. El Congreso actúe ahora. Biden debe de cumplir su promesa porque yo le di mi voto y tiene que cumplir lo que prometió. Último, queremos que la administración haga todo lo posible bajo una acción ejecutiva para eliminar el miedo de las reportaciones que, que ha existido bajo la administración Obama y Trump. Biden, no queremos tu nombre aquí tampoco. Que quede Obama, um, Obama y Trump, no el tuyo, por favor. Actúa ahora, así que pueda terminar. Todos los miembros del Congreso pónganse las filas y tomen en cuenta nuestras demandas, porque ya no podemos esperar y sí se puede. Y unidos vamos a poder y vamos a salir todos adelante y se va a darle. Gracias, bye. Buenas tardes, muy buenas to the stage along with Alma from LSNA. Good afternoon. My name is Alma and I am leader with the Logan Square Neighborhood Association. It is my honor to welcome Governor Pritzker to the stage. Governor, oh, Governor, would first like to thank you for signing the FY22 budget that included 44 million for the immigrant service line item. 
It will help organizations like L LSNA and over 60 others do the important work of helping Illinois immigrants with citizenship support, getting, getting public benefits that they are entitled to, and receiving directly direct cash assistance if they were included for the federal, if they, sorry, receiving direct cash assistance if they were excluded from the federal relief. We know that change the, to our laws do have the power to help and change lives. This Illinois budget will help families like mine. You have been an ally of ICIRR and immigrants over the, pa the over past two and a half years, and we are truly grateful. As we stated earlier, we are in a critical moment, both at the state and federal levels. At the state level, your commitment for our platform, most recently, the Illinois Way Forward Act, support our United vision to, to make Illinois the most welcoming to stay to all its residents. Federally, we need all the support we can get to push Illinois senators and members of Congress to, su to support a pathway to citizenship in the budget. So, Governor, we have two questions for you at this moment. I am going to say them in English and then I will say them in Spanish before, before you respond. Will you commit to signing the Illinois Way Forward Act into law? Will you use your influence both publicly and directly on a one-on-one -on -one level to ask the member of the Illinois delegation along with Senator Darwin and Dagworth to support providing as broad of a pathway to citizenship as possible in the federal budget through budget reconciliation? Se, com se compromete usted a firmar la nueva ley Illinois, Illinois way forward y se compromete a usar su influencia, su influencia en forma pública y personal para pedirles a los miembros de la de Asinois y a los senadores Darwin y Dagworth para que apoyen el camino hacia la ciudadanía más amplio a través del presupuesto federal. So, Governor, please address to the crowd. Stay right here for a moment. Well, before you leave the stage, let me say yes and yes. Hi, Alma, thank you very much. I am so proud to be your governor today. In Illinois, all our families deserve to feel safe and secure. In my first year in office, I authorized more pro-immigration legislation than any governor in memory. And I remain committed to build upon our efforts so that immigrants and refugees in Illinois have equal participation in all parts of our diverse state. And I remain committed to that throughout my term in office. It's why Illinois is on the cusp of becoming the third state in the entire nation to end state detention contracts with ICE. Today, I want you to know that my administration has been fully supportive of the Trust Act, and I signed legislation to strengthen it when I came into office, and I will continue to ensure that Illinois is safe and welcoming for all. I know that there is still much more work that needs to be done, we need additional legislation to ensure that all communities feel safe without the fear of being separated from loved ones. And I commit to you that my administration will continue working with ICER and with the Latino Caucus 
and all of the ICER coalition to ensure that the Illinois Way Forward Act is signed into law. Our moment is now. We need to get things done now. I believe in an Illinois that will continue to hold our federal government accountable to our ideals of liberty and justice for all. Every day, each and every day, I want our immigrant community to know that Illinois is and always will be your home. Thank you very much. Let's give it up for Governor Pritzker one more time! El gobernador Pritzker ha comprometido a apoyar nuestras dos exigencias. Va a apoyar el Illinois Way Forward Act para eliminar las detenciones de inmigrantes en el Estado. Y va a usar su influencia para solicitar apoyo de la provisión de un camino hacia la ciudadanía. ¡Give it up! So we welcome Alex and Javier to the stage. Hi everyone, I'm Alex with JCUA. Y yo soy Angie de Casa Michoacán. And, and we're gonna lead some chants to make sure that we're heard throughout the state and throughout the country. So when I say we won't, you say wait, we won't. We won't. We won't. Si se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. No somos uno, no somos once. Once millones, cuéntenos bien. No somos uno, no somos diez. Once millones, cuéntenos bien. Now when I say citizenship for who, you say citizenship for all. Citizenship for who? Citizenship for all. Citizenship for who? Citizenship for all. Citizenship for who? Ni una más deportación. Ni una más deportación. Ni una más deportación. Ni una más deportación. Not one more deportation. Not one more. Deportation. Not one more. Deportation. Not one more. Deportation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. and experts, three testimonies from directly impacted people from across the state. Please welcome Miguel, Bo, and Cesar. Tenemos la oportunidad de escuchar de algunos miembros del Congreso del Nivel Federal, pero antes de eso vamos a escuchar algunas voces críticas de expertos, tres testimonios de personas direct directamente afectadas por, el por todo el Estado. Por favor, denle la bienvenida a Miguel, Bo y César. Hello, can you all hear me? Yeah? I, I, uh, hi, my name is Bo, and in short, I'm here to say that we need citizenship now and we just need that, we just need that. I'm an undocumented person myself. I came to the, the U.S. when I was 13 in 2009. Uh, I didn't qualify for DACA before because of the time I've arrived, but ever since then, uh, being undocumented shows me that I didn't have access. I didn't have access to, I needed to work in the restaurant, I couldn't get a job, I couldn't drive at one point, I couldn't go to school, and 
it's just it's not about anything else but not having access and to live in that survival mentality and ever since i've been here i've seen people lost their lives i came here to live with my aunt and uncle i you know i've lost that relationship with my parents i've lost my aunt and uncles in thailand and we were always just being separated by borders and today i got a call from my mentor today he got uh, he got fired from his job because his daca expired and this is just a reminder to show that daca was never enough only 10% of 11 million undocumented people qualify for it. And even those who qualify for it, they live within this two-year limbo where they need to keep paying the government so that they could work and exist and live with dignity and have access to just live as human beings. And um, I just I also understand that people don't, don't qualify. And DACA is something that is tricky to our community because it pits us against each other. It creates this narrative of good immigrants who are deserving to be in this country because they might be dreamers, highly educated students, but what happened to the community? You know, we're here as a community members together, so I think we all need to live our life, live our best life. Some of us made some mistakes. It is what it is, you know? People make mistakes and life has its own circumstances. And um, it's a stolen land anyway. There's a way for us to show up and to win. I think I've been tired my life, but I think I just re gotta remind that we gotta keep showing up and seeing y'all like, you know, I feel that love and I'm gonna end with, okay. We believe that we will win. We will win. We believe that we will win. Citizenship for who? All right, thank you. I wouldn't wanna pass the mic. Okay. Uh, thank you, Bo. Bo Tai es un inmigrante indocumentado sin DACA de Tailandia. Llegó a los 13 años y en no tener DACA, Bo ha bregado con el trabajo, el cuidado médico, todo por no calificar por DACA. Bo nos recuerda que DACA no es suficiente y no ayuda a nuestros padres, a nuestros tíos, a nuestras tías y a todos los inmigrantes que no calificaron por razones arbitrarias. Bo nos recuerda y nos dice que todos los inmigrantes tenemos el derecho a la dignidad y el respeto. Necesitamos ciudadanía ahora para todos. Buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Miguel Camacho, soy líder de Cambiando Vidas en Access Living y estoy aquí el día de hoy para decirles, dejarles saber que ya es necesario que haya un alivio migratorio para todos, no solo para algunos, para todos. Mi familia y yo hemos estado aquí en este país por más de 25 años esperando por un alivio migratorio, el cual hasta ahorita no ha llegado. En esos 25 años hemos estado viviendo con incertidumbre, miedo de que algún día por falta de estatus mi esposa o yo seamos sujetos a una deportación migratoria y separen a nuestra familia. Para mí como persona con discapacidad y con necesidades específicas médicas, las cuales no puedo llevar a cabo como debería por falta de acceso a cuidado de salud y por falta de estatus, en ocasiones me encuentro en situaciones donde mi vida está en riesgo. Yo también dependo del apoyo que me dan mis hijas y mi esposa, apoyo físico, moral y económico que me dan mi esposa y mis hijas, las cuales aún con esta pandemia y después de haber superado la enfermedad del COVID, han tenido que seguir trabajando para traer el sustento al hogar. Con una separación para nosotros ahorita sería muy difícil de superar, no sabríamos cómo seguir adelante. Por eso... Una vez más, yo quiero dejarle saber al presidente Biden, a su administración y al Congreso que ya hemos esperado por muchos años, que ya es tiempo de que haya un alivio migratorio ahora para todos, ahora y para todos. Gracias por escuchar mi testimonio.